Hey, little cow. What's up? I got a new mouse. Oh, nice. Check it out. What is it? Uh, you can't read? Yeah. I can read, but like, what is it? Like, what is it? What's it's, a, special it's, it? it's a Logitech Super Light. Oh, cool. Nice. Hmm. Have you ever thought what would happen if I plug a mouse into the wall? Uh, no, that's never crossed my mind. But, uh, I guess you can try it, see what happens. Maybe you can control the world. I plugged it into a wall. Um, is there anything you want? Um, I could use a new phone. A uh, new phone, huh? Okay, let me see if I can get it with a click of a button. It actually worked! Brand oh, new iPhone! Oh my goodness, that's crazy! That's insane! What else can we do with it? I think this video is going to do a lot better if we had a girl in it. Yeah, I agree. Yo, come on. No, bro, come on. No, come on. Yo, this is not cool. Ugh. Change voice. Change me back. So we picked up one of these Logitech G Pro X Superlight, or is it interpreted as Pro Times Superlight? Uh, not too sure. Anyways, we bought it from a store, so we physically had to go look for it. It wasn't as straightforward of an experience as expected. So we went in expecting to see, you know, super light all over the packaging. Uh, but as you can see here, it says super light here in very, very small font. Um, so the packaging looks identical to the regular Pro, which is the non super light. So we were only confident uh, we were buying the right mouse after seeing the uh, less than 63 grams at the back right here. So we've got a pretty recognizable Logitech packaging. You're not going to mistake it for any other brands. So let's open it right here. And on top we've got the mouse itself. Then underneath, here we have the... USB wireless receiver and the uh, extension adapter. This is the play to win packaging and inside is a cable. Uh, so I think you know um, one negative point about this is it's not a USB C charging cable. It's not totally a deal breaker but you know I think Logitech can do better. Inside the packaging, um, we've got some grip tape. I personally never use it as I don't like the uh, look of it. Uh, so we've got right here, grip tape. Um, here's the extension manual sticker. And this is a additional door puck. Uh, so the door puck actually goes here, replaces this. So this acts as a as a mouse feed as well, which I think is quite neat. So the mouse retails for one hundred forty nine ninety nine U S dollars. That's quite expensive. At this price point, you're not going to lack any specs at all. But I'll just run through the specs, uh, key specs anyways. So it comes with a Hero sensor, uh, 25,600 max DPI. Now that's absurd. I've personally never gone beyond 16,000 for my own usage. But it's nice to know you have 25,600 in your pocket. It also comes with 400 IPS as well as up to 1000 Hertz for responsiveness. 63 grams for a full shell wireless mouse. Now that's really impressive. In comparison, this is the Project Gaming S001, uh, my daily mouse. It's also 63 grams. 
um, but it's got two extra buttons, uh, the Hertz button and the DPI button. Um, so on the super light, you're not missing too much. This only becomes an issue if you're used to changing DPI on the fly of your mouse because uh, it doesn't have that button. The super light's got 70 hours of battery life. The last mouse we looked at was the glorious Model O wireless. It's not really a fair fight since super light doesn't have RGB draining its battery. Hence the super light battery goes further in real world scenarios. You can make the case that the Model O wireless can turn off the RGB but most people buying the particular mouse prefers RGB on anyways. This is actually a very handsome or pretty mouse, especially if you have a white setup. I can't think of any other mouse to get if I was running a white, well, white theme. In terms of shape, I'm not a big fan of it, and that's really down to personal preference. My pinky finger doesn't feel as comfortable as compared to an EC2 shape uh, mouse. I mean, you can make the argument that it's ambidextrous, uh, but they got rid of the side buttons on the right-hand side that left-handers use. So here's a sound check. No issues with the build quality, and to be expected at this price range, Let's talk about the software, and you're going to 100% need it. They call it the Onboard Memory Manager. This is the only place you can see what percentage of battery you have left. Good thing is you don't have to check that often as the battery life is pretty good. Very simple layout, but it's not as intuitive as the Glorious software. There's a learning curve as you need to utilize the right click to change the DPI. The mouse comes in black and white color. White is definitely the favorite. There's more black color still sitting on the shelves. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. We really, really need the subs. To wrap everything up, if you don't like the honeycomb feel, but you want a lightweight mouse, the super light is a strong buy, especially if you're running a white setup. But if you feel like it's too expensive and you can compromise on the build quality a bit, and you're all about RGB, or if you guys just want to show us some love, Fodges Gaming S001 is a strong consideration. And on that bombshell, see you guys in the next one.